Hello, this is a quick example to illustrate the use of maximum and minimum load factors on permanent loads in load combinations. The objective of using the load combinations is to find the maximum and minimum force effects in a member at a location of interest resulting from the different combinations while considering different load cases. Force effects include axial forces, shear forces, bending moments, and deflections. Bending moments and shear forces uh, can occur at several different places along a member. So if you're looking at those, you typically want the maximum. But in all cases, when you're doing combinations, you should do a combination of bending moments or shear forces at a particular location in the beam. You don't want to combine a bending moment from one point due to dead load with a bending moment from a different point on the beam due to live load. Sometimes variable or transient loads change positions or have different magnitudes, and that results in different load cases. And when we say maximum, that generally means the maximum positive effect, or when we say minimum, that generally means the maximum negative effect. So in this case, if we have two loads, one that's 100 kips and another that's 150, we're generally looking at the 150 as being the maximum. And when we have two loads that are, say, negative 100 and negative 150, we would generally look at negative 150 as being the maximum negative. Okay. Dead loads are permanent loads that are always present on the structure. Examples include the uh, uh, variable D if you're looking at the ASCE7 load combinations or DC if you're looking at the ASHTO load combinations. You use the maximum values of gamma for the dead loads when you're concerned about underestimating the dead loads. You use the minimum values of gamma when you're concerned about overestimating the dead loads. Future wearing surface and utilities, uh, we call that DW in the context of ASHTO, are permanent loads that may or may not be present. Fluid forces and horizontal earth pressures also fall into this category. Okay, these are less predictable than dead loads, but they're more predictable than live loads. So you use the maximum values of gamma when you're concerned about underestimating DW, F, or H. You use the minimum values of gamma when you're concerned about overestimating DW, F, or H. And you use a zero value for the load factor to account for the possibility that these forces might not be present at all. In the commentary to ASCE 7, it's worded like this. It says that the dead load is multiplied by the factor of 0 0.9 if it has a stabilizing effect. Otherwise, it is multiplied by the load factor of 1.2. In the ASHTO specification, it says that in load combinations where one force effect decreases another effect, the minimum value shall be applied to the load reducing the force effect. And it goes on to say, that for permanent force effects, the load factor that produces the more critical combination shall be selected, where the permanent load increases, increases the stability or load carrying capacity of a component or bridge, the minimum value of the load factor for that permanent load shall be investigated. When load effects due to permanent loads have the same sense as load effects due to other loads, it is necessary to consider only the maximum load factors for the permanent loads. These cases include, for example, when the dead load, live load, and snow load all create tension in the same member, when the dead load, live load, and wind load all create compression in the same member, when dead and live both create positive bending moment at a location in a member, or when the DC, DW, and live load plus impact loads all create negative bending in the same location in a member. On the other hand, when load effects due to permanent loads have the opposite sense as load effects due to other loads, then it is necessary to consider both the maximum and the minimum load factors for the permanent loads. Examples of this include cases where the dead load creates compression, but the live load and the snow load create tension in a member, where the dead load creates tension, but the live load and the snow load cre create compression in a member, or the third case where uh, the dead load creates positive bending at a location in a member, but the live load creates negative bending at the same location. And then finally, in the context of bridges, a case where DC and DW loads create positive bending at a location, but live load plus impact creates negative bending. 
Permanent gravity loads such as D, DC, and DW always create load effects that have the same sense. There's no need to mix maximum, minimum, or zero load factors for these permanent loads. For example, if DC creates tension in a member, then DW will also create tension. If, D if DC creates compression, then DW will also create compression. If DC creates positive bending, then DW will also create positive bending, etc. The same can't be said, though, for fluid forces or uh, lateral earth pressures. Okay, let's consider this example. We have a case where the moment due to DC loading at a point is 50 kip feet. The moment due to DW loading at the same point is equal to 20 kip feet. And the moment due to live load plus impact could be 126, minus 30, or minus 70 kip feet, depending on where the truck is at. We want to evaluate the Ashto strength one load combination using load factors of 1.25 or 0.9 for DC loads and load factors of 1.5, 0.65 or zero for DW loads. Now with a situation where we have three different live load moments, that creates three different load cases that we have to evaluate. One uh, where we have the permanent loads plus the live load of 126 kip feet where we a second where we have the permanent loads and a live load moment of minus 30 kip feet in a third case where we have permanent loads plus the live load moment of minus 70 kip feet. All right, so if we consider the first case with our maximum load factors, we have 1.25 times the DC moment plus 1.5 times the DW moment plus 1.75 plus the live load plus impact moment, and that results in a factored load of 313 kip feet. If we consider the first load case with our minimum load factors, we end up with 0.9 times 50, or I'm sorry, 0.9 times the DC moment, plus 0.65 times the DW moment, plus 1.75 times the moment due to live load plus impact, and that gives us 279 kip feet. And then finally, we can consider the minimum load factor on DC loads and the zero load factor on DW loads, and we end up with 266 kip feet. Now, if we cons with the consideration of these three, the first one is critical. We wouldn't need to consider case 1B or case 1C because they are all three positive and case 1A is the maximum of those three. If we look at the second load case, we have the same three combinations that could be considered. And in this case, um, the permanent loads create moments that are positive, positive 50 kip feet or positive 20 kip feet, but the variable loads or transient loads create a negative moment. So we have negative 30 kip feet for the moment due to live load plus impact. So in this case, we end up with two critical values. One gives us a maximum positive moment, case 2A, and the other one gives us the maximum negative moment, case 2C. So we would have to consider both of those potentially. Finally, if we consider load case three and push all the numbers through here, in this case, we have a positive moment due to DC loads, a positive moment due to DW loads, and a negative moment due to live load plus impact. But in this case, the negative moment due to live load plus impact is actually a larger negative load than it was in case two. So when we work through the three permutations of that load combination with the different uh, dead load factors, you can see that we only have one case that's critical, case 3C. So in this case, we would need to report only the moment of negative 77.5 kip feet. The other two are not critical because they're all three negative and only one of them is the maximum negative moment. Okay, let's consider a second example. In this case, the moments due to permanent loads are negative. And again, we have three different moments due to live load plus impact that correspond presumably to three different locations of the truck on the bridge. So if we look at those three different live load moments, that's going to lead to three different load cases that we would consider. Um, case four, where we have negative permanent moments and a positive moment due to live load plus impact. Case five, where we have negative moments due to permanent loads and uh, a uh, modest uh, positive moment due to live load plus impact. And then the uh, case six, where we have negative moments due to permanent loads and a uh, negative 152 kip feet due to live load plus impact.
Okay, if we work through um, case four, uh, we consider uh, all the different combinations of the uh, maximum uh, and minimum load factors for permanent loads. What we can observe is that only one case is critical. Um, in this case, we have a rather large positive moment due to the transient loads relative to the negative moments due to the DC uh, uh, and DW moments. So um, only one case is critical. They're all positive and we just choose the largest of those three. In the uh, next case, case five, it works out again here with a, with a modest moment of 46 kip feet due to live load plus impact that using both maximum and minimum factors on uh, permanent loads results in a negative 48.8 kip feet with the maximum factors or 22 kip feet positive using the minimum factors in the zero factors. And then uh, finally, in the, the last case, case six, again, here we have the same sign on the moments due to permanent loads and the moments due to live load plus impact. So we have only one critical case there. That is a case of negative 395 kip feet. Okay, so hopefully this example helped. Um, and in summary, you consider uh, the maximum and the minimum load factors on permanent loads, depending on whether they have the same sign or a different sign as the, uh, the loads that are considered to be variable, like live load. If uh, the permanent loads have a different sign than the live loads, then you have to consider both the maximum and the minimum load factors on permanent loads. Um, additionally, it wouldn't be considered appropriate in most cases to consider the maximum load factor on uh, a DC type of loading along with a minimum load factor on a DW type of loading. In general, they're always going to create the same type of a load effect, so you wouldn't want to mix and match in that respect. Okay, hopefully this helps. Thanks.